Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. Today we're going to talk about FM8 from Native Instruments Complete, and uh, we're going to make a TB303 style bass line using the arpeggiator and no filter, and then we're going to create some variations on that sound using FM8's morphing capabilities. So hold on to your hats, let's get going. So to get started, I've taken the liberty of just creating a little sequence uh, in Ableton Live that's going to loop just one note, it's just a C. Now, if we go to the Ops page under the Experts section in the Navigator over here, you can see that we're only using one operator right now. Operators A through F are actually oscillators, and if we click and drag underneath down here, we're actually turning up the amount of audio sent to the mix bus. You can think of this down here as a mixing board. So I can turn it up and down by clicking and dragging. And that's the basic principle behind FM8's FM matrix. Now, if I want to use a second oscillator, I can go ahead and activate it by right-clicking on it, and then I can either put it down into the mix bus, or I can do some frequency modulation, which is what FM stands for. Now, if I click and drag right here, then we're now sending signal from E to F, and E will be modulating the frequency of F. You can think of this like a really fast vibrato. When we do this at audio rate, we end up with sidebands. We end up with harmonics and partials. And uh, the beauty of FM is that we can control those over time and create some different flavors just from very simple tools. So let's listen to how E is affecting F. So we've already added some harmonics. You can, you can take a look at the harmonic series up here. And now another thing that I can do with the FM matrix is add feedback to both of these operators. Now I'm just feeding their own signal back in, and we can use this to create a different set of harmonics. I'm going to click on this spectrum button, and you can see that I'm actually making my own little sawtooth wave. Now if I click on any of the operators, it's going to show me the specific parameters for that particular operator. And you can see that both of these are sine waves right now and yet we've made a sawtooth. So now if I go into E's operator page, we can also get to it by clicking over here in the navigator, uh, we can see that we have some tuning options, we have waveforms, we have amplitude, we have the amplitude modulation matrix in here, and we also have an amplitude envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the attack so that when we actually hit this note, there's a little bit of change over time. So we're gonna get a little bit of movement without even using a filter. Okay, now that we've got a bit of a nice sound going, I'm going to go ahead and activate the arpeggiator. We'll go to the arpeggiator page here in the navigator, and I can turn it on up here or down in the global section. I can just hit on. Now the arpeggiator is going to take the incoming note message and use the information that we set up in the pattern editor to create a new sequence. So among other things, we can decide the length of the sequence just by clicking and dragging this arrow. I'm going to choose 16 steps. And then we can also do things like change the tuning with the octave and the transpose functions. Uh, we can also tie notes together. And then you can use this on section here to activate and deactivate each individual step. Up top here, we have the tempo section. Uh, the tempo here should reflect the one inside of your DAW. Uh, then you have the rhythmic subdivision that the arpeggiator is going to use. We can then uh, use triplets or dotted versions of that particular rhythm. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a listen. Here's the 16th notes. Okay, we can listen to 30 seconds. An eighth note. Quarter note and so on. So, we also have a note length knob where we can change the length of each note. Now this is important because the rhythmic subdivision we set here is only setting the rate of note on messages. We set the actual length of each note here. Now what you might notice is that we're getting a little bit of clicking every now and then. So what we can do to remedy that is just soften up the release of F's amplitude envelope. That's going to make it nice and, nice and clean. So let's go back here and let's go ahead and do some octave displacement. So I'm just going to go two octaves up here, one octave down here, one octave up, two, one, and so on. Thank you. 
Now let's add some transpositions here. The transpose section will let you transpose by semitones, up to 11 of them. If you want to go higher than 11, then use the octave section. Okay, so that's pretty good. We could make this a little bit more interesting by getting a bit of a grittier sound. So let's go back to E's envelope and let's adjust it based on the uh, new tempo and rhythm that we're using. All right, so that's pretty good so far. Let's add a little bit more movement to this thing uh, by tying some notes together. What the tie function is going to do is make it so that uh, each note on message doesn't actually refire the envelope. So we've got some pretty interesting stuff here, but not all of these ties are creating the interest that I wanted because we're actually changing pitch over some of those ties, and so it's, they're really not having the desired effect. Well, there's another reason to use a tie. If we go to the master section, we can go ahead and turn on the portamento, and the portamento is going to create a glide between pitches, so it's not just stepping. And if we leave auto on, it's only going to glide between notes that we've tied. We can adjust the glide time here. So now that we've got a nice sequence going here, it would be nice to be able to create some variations on it. Well, FM8 has a great function called morphing, which will actually let us morph or transition between four different sets of parameters and create some really nice variations on the sound. So you'll notice as I move this red cursor up top here that we're actually going through some different settings inside of the FM matrix. Well, we can actually morph between settings in all four corners of here. So if I move the cursor here and make some changes, then it'll save them and I can morph between them. Now you can morph anything that has the little box next to it. So we can morph things in the FM matrix, we can morph tuning, we can morph the waveform, we can morph filter and uh, saturator settings here. Things that we can't morph, for example, are envelope shapes, and we also can't morph individual effects settings. So for example, if I bring in a shelving EQ, I can't morph this setting, but what I can do is morph the amount, which is acting sort of like a dry wet for all of the effects, and we can use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this all the way down, and I'm gonna to go to the easy morph section. Now, we can see a bigger version of, of the morph section here, and as I move it, you can see that the morph cursor up top moves. Wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to start from scratch in all four corners here? Well, what we can do is use this normalized timbres function. If I take the cursor and I put it in the corner that I would like to copy to the rest of the areas of the morph grid, I can go ahead and hit normalize timbres. And what you will see, if I go to the operator section, is that now I have that same sound in all four corners. So why don't I go ahead and create some variations? So I've got this one, this is my first. So that's pretty good. Let's move to the next one and let's create a bit of a bolder sound. And let's experiment with some different waveforms. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try using uh, a different waveform for the modulator, which is E in this case. All right, so that's sounding pretty good. We've got a little bit of beef happening.
So I've changed F's ratio to 0.5, which will actually drop it an octave. So we have a bit of a deeper sound. Here's the first one. Let's just brighten that up a touch. Now here's the second sound. Let's do a third one here. Let's introduce operator D, and let's drop it to a ratio of 0.5, so it's giving us a nice sub bass and octave down. And now let's uh, let's try a different waveform for E. Alright, great. So now we have D modulating F as well as E modulating F. Here's just D. Oh, and we can get rid of that clicking by softening up the envelope a little bit. Let's just add one more operator here, one more pair, and let's try one of the formant waves. Now let's do the last one. Let's add another operator. Let's go ahead and bring up the ratio. All right, and we can we can morph waveform. So why don't we change that? If you start to get a bit of a noisy sound like that, just try try working some of the feedback so it's not quite so severe. Alright, so now we've got a nice growly sound. And let's go ahead and add a reverb to this one. We'll add the reverb here, and we'll simply turn up the amount. So now when I go to one of the other corners, the amount is all the way down. Or we could have just a little bit if we want. It doesn't have to be just on or off. So what I'm going to do now is make it so that we can interact a little bit with this thing. Now, what it would be great is if we could use a MIDI controller to control our morphing. Now, there are two ways to go about it. First of all, if we go to the master section, FM8 has a great MIDI learn capability on its own. We can click MIDI learn here and then click morph X and learn it and morph Y and learn it just by moving the controller you would like to use. You can go ahead and turn MIDI learn off just by clicking on it again. But if you're going to automate this thing and you're working within a DAW like I am, I'd suggest using your DAW's built-in MIDI learn capabilities. So let's go back here and we're going to use the configure function in Ableton Live. And what this does is it adds plugin parameters to a list here so that you can actually MIDI learn them through Ableton Live. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit configure here. And now instead of clicking here, I'm actually going to go about it a different way, and let's go over to the Easy Morph section. I'm just going to take this thing, and I'm going to move it around, and you can see that those two parameters have come up. As I move Morph Y, the cursor goes up and down, and as I move Morph X, the cursor goes left to right. Now I can hit Command M, and I can just click on each control, and as I move a control on my MIDI controller, they will be learned to those parameters. Hit Command M again to get out, and now I can basically play this thing Etch-a-Sketch style. Okay, so let's take a listen to what this thing sounds like with a little minimal techno beat.
My name's Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm the co-designer and developer of the sound design and synthesis program here at DubSpot in New York City and online. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for more. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.